Hey, Sean Foyt here with Hold the Line Podcast, and man, I am so pumped about this with my friend Kirk Cameron. Hey, we're doing this together. We're doing this together. We are actually in New Jersey right now. That's right. Right across the line, Philly area, and um, we got something so exciting that's happening this morning. Uh, but as a context and a backdrop to that, yeah. uh, you guys, I'm sure you've seen Kirk in so many films, grown up watching him, et cetera, et cetera. Your parents grew up watching him. <laughs> <laughs> that tells you uh, a little bit of his age. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but hey, listen, so since the pandemic, uh, obviously you've taken a stand, you've been bold, you've been strong. We've been so grateful for you and, and your stance. And it's been an encouragement to me. For sure. So I just want to say that um, feels like there's there's more of us out there. You yeah, know? There, there are. There's there's hundreds and hundreds, even thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people who want to go the way that we're right. going, but yeah. they're afraid or they don't know what to do. Right. Right. And and so we've been. Yeah, we've just been so encouraged. And I uh, we've overlapped in different times and different moments. Um, but I'm excited to be here, and I I want you to share a little bit of the journey of what you're on. Sure. Okay. You're gonna he's gonna introduce a children's book, which I'm pumped about. I have four kids. For those of you that don't know, and ages 12, 10, 8, and five, and I have one of them with me today. 12, 10, 8, and five. 12, you 10, got, 8, man, and five. You got your hands full. I do. Um, but yeah, just give me a little bit of the backstory. Like, obviously, God's led you in different seasons of your life to do different things how did you get here and yeah why well <clears throat> let's see so uh, you, you know I, I call myself a recovering atheist I I used to never believe in God when I was 18 the Lord saved me put me on growing pains mm -hmm. and then has opened up cool opportunities for me to share the gospel and then most recently um, value our country and the the freedoms and the liberties and the blessings that we have here. And as a father, I've got six kids. They're 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, and 20. Unreal. Um, it doesn't get easier, bro. Just so, you, <laughs> just so you know, it's just different. But uh, you still don't get to sleep, with, especially with, your, with the young adults. And, uh, and now I want to do things that are going to preserve the blessings that we've grown up with for our kids. And, and the latest uh, installment of that is I wrote this children's book called As You Grow. <clears throat> if you can see this, it's about a little acorn that turns into this giant tree called Sky Tree. And through the seasons of his life, he's got to learn biblical wisdom and the fruit of the spirit, like yeah. love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, yeah. gentleness, self-control. Uh, and while he does, uh, enemies come, they try to uh, break him and burn him, and the animals have to, have to team up together to heal him. And it's a message for America today. And um, We've had quite a bit of opposition to it. In fact, we were denied by over 50 woke public libraries who would not allow me to have a public story reading of this book, even though they've already had drag queen story yeah. hour readings in those same libraries. So this kind of became a story in the news. Uh, I wrote them a letter, said, here's a free copy of the book so you can read it for yourself. Uh, but for you to discriminate against me because I'm a Christian uh, is unconstitutional, and I'm right. ready to see you in court over that. Yeah. They, they reversed course. We went to the library, and over 2,500 parents and children showed up to overwhelm this library. Not, wow. Not, now, where was that, that library That was in at? Indianapolis. Okay. But then we've had similar reactions in New York and in Los Angeles and uh, Arizona, other places. And so today we're in the, the Philadelphia, New Jersey area, and we're going to read this book. But the cool thing is, is that there's this awesome Christian singer, worship leader, who's going to lead us in the national anthem and worship songs. His name is Sean Foy, and I have been looking forward to this for weeks and weeks. So... Um yeah, I'm honored to be here. I'm, I'm so excited about this. Now, w was there anything like, I, I was wondering this, like the pandemic, the lockdowns, anything, did any of that provoke this or were you already on this journey prior to that? No, this, this just happened at Christmas time. So the, okay. I think the, pan, well, let me say, I, I think that the pan, you and I both know that the pandemic, some people call it the scamdemic, Right. We look at the reaction from the government and the opportunity that so many took to profit and transfer wealth right. to giant corporations and seize power. That, I, did, I know, provoked p 
people to say, wait a minute, my spidey senses are going off here. Right. Something is wrong. Yeah. And they begin reading books like Animal Farm and they start looking at uh, um, 1984. They're listening to independent news sources yeah. saying, man, this, this is a revolution. This is a cultural takeover and it's been going on for a long time. So when I came out with this book, I think people were saying, that's awesome. Here, here's somebody doing something little, but little things can spark big things. Right. And you know, yeah. you showing up in a park, you showing up in a parking lot with a guitar can spark right. a, a revival of the heart yeah. and of principles that can heal America from the yeah. inside out. Yeah. So I'm trying to do my version uh, with a children's book. That's amazing. And I, you know, a little bit of our journey as parents. So we've, when we were in NorCal and when the, when the pandemic happened, we pulled our kids out and homeschooled really just because it was like everything started to be canceled and then there was all these rules you know if somebody has a cough then that class has to go home for two weeks and they quarantine yeah. it was just it was like insane. we're not doing that so we pulled our kids out we began the homeschool journey which we said we would never do <laughs> even though my wife has a double education degree we just said we're never going to do it but we ended up doing it and um and so it's been interesting and it's actually caused a deep dive into the educational issues happening the clash of course Insane. you can see even even in america uh what was exposed in virginia and what happened with the election there which which parents rose up they actually flipped virginia from huh. a blue state to a red state yep. and a lot of that was because uh of what was taking in northern virginia with the schools and what was being exposed yeah it seems like we're in a season where we're finally becoming aware of the indoctrination that's been purposeful totally. against our kids. Totally. What, what have you learned or discovered about that? Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Um, I, I, I can picture um, the Marxists behind the black curtain going, yeah. and they're laughing, high-fiving, because the conservatives, the Christians that have so grown up, soaked in liberty, soaked in blessing, right. enjoying the good times, have not... We've, we've succumbed to uh, national amnesia. Yeah. We, we have had our own history rewritten and the deep biblical root that has produced all this prosperity, all this liberty is being erased. And so because we, we don't know where the liberty and blessing came from, uh, we're easily deceived. Right. And, and we're buying this idea that America is a bad country, it's built right. on racism, right. and that Christianity is the problem right. in, the, in yeah. the world that will lead us right into communist Russia. We will become a, a, a country that looks nothing like the United States of America right. because you either go with Christianity or you go with chaos. Right. Um, there's a great quote by uh, Daniel Webster, the leading uh, statesman in the 1800s. In early America, he said, hold on my friends to the Constitution. For if the American Constitution is lost, there will be anarchy throughout the world. Yeah. And we look, why, why, why are our cities being burned? Why, is, why are babies being murdered in the womb? Why yeah. is the family, the church, and civil government seeming to be deconstructed and decomposing? Could it be that we've lost sight of not only the Constitution, but the roots of the Constitution, which are the principles of Christianity? Yeah. And I think we have, that's exactly what we have to do, which is why what you're doing is so important which is why a, a little book like this and all the other brave books are important, is it's bringing back to our memory that right. yes, blessing is not something that you take for granted. Freedom isn't free. It requires us to love Indeed. God, get back to the original American covenant of being in relationship with God and, and helping one another yeah. and then applying all that to church, family, and civil government. What, what, what is your take on this? Because, I mean, I get hit with this all the time. It's, it's kind of, it's actually, I, I, in some ways, I've kind of just admitted to it. But, like, Rolling Stone came out with an article last week. I was speaking at a church, and I just said, you know what? This talk of Christian nationalism, this pushback against, uh, against Christianity, against doing this kind of thing, you know, because people say the deconstructed former Christians would say, you don't need to shove God into everything. And I said this, I said, listen, this is what they hit me on. I want a country where Christians are making the laws. I want a country where believers are engaged in every sphere of society. I want a country where, God, like there is no 
law outside of the biblical moral law. Like that is the only compass in all of human history. Where else are you going to base your law? And so I began to speak about this and it was funny because they did this big article and it caused this pushback and all these Satanists and anarchists and psycho people were sending me death threats. But I actually do believe that. Like, and maybe it's Christian national. I don't know. Depends on people's definitions of that. What is your response to that? I'm sure you get mm. hammered with that all the time. Well, it, it, what, a, what a great topic. We just need a couple of cigars and five, yeah. five hours to talk <laughs> exactly. about it around a campfire. But look, in your home, I'm going to make it even simpler than, than national level and say in your home, somebody's values are going to reign supreme. Right. And they ought to be yours right. and your wife's, right. not your kids. Right. Right. So somebody, and it shouldn't be your neighbors, and it shouldn't be the governments, somebody's values are going to reign supreme. And, and you're the uh, authority, you and your wife are the authority figures in your home, and you guys love your kids the best. Um, you're not going to let anybody else do that for you. In the United States, someone's values will reign supreme. It'll be Christian values, it'll right. be Islamic values, right. it'll be Marxist, communist values, it'll be secular humanist values. And if you look throughout history, you'll find that <clears throat> there has never been any, co any comparable amount of religious freedom, educational opportunity, economic freedom, political freedom, where, where people have equal rights under the law, where you have inalienable rights from God that the government can't even take away from you, that you have the ability to choose your own leaders. Yeah. All of that comes from only Christianity right. and the biblical model God gave to Moses. That's why the United States was such a freak thing in history. People are like, are they crazy? They're not gonna have a king. They're, right. not, they're not gonna have a, a ruler. Right. They're like, no. Right. We came from that in England, and it led yeah. to all of us being slaves. What we're going to do is we're going to be a self-governing nation. Right. We're going to govern ourselves. And they're like, let's see how that's going to work. We've been here for 400 years since the pilgrims landed in, in Plymouth. But uh, Benjamin Franklin said when he was asked by this woman coming out of the Constitutional Convention, what did you give us? Did you, did you end up writing a constitution that gives us a monarchy with a king, or did you give us a republic where the people govern themselves? And he said, a republic, madam, if you can keep it. Yeah. And that's, that's the big deal, is right. can we govern ourselves right. if we can't, and we start acting like a bunch of rebellious, uh, 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 you know, um, narcissistic teenagers, and start fighting and arguing, we will lose our republic and you know, daddy's gonna have to come in with the big arm of the law and that may be China, that may be Russia, right. that may be just the secular humanist communists in our Regressive, government right now yeah. that come in and go, boom, we're coming in to bring law and order. And the people will say thank you because we're so tired of the chaos. The, the other option is what our, our forefathers did. They had a revolution in their heart, they turned back to God right. and they said, we're going to govern ourselves, and I'm going to consider my brother's interests above my own. Yeah. And we're going to, and we're not going to give evil a chance in this country because Christians were the leaders. Right. As you said. Yeah, I um, I, and and I think that what I want people to get and is the how necessary it is to engage in the pushback. It's like you know, Paul argued for his Roman citizenship was very clear. Hey, listen, I'm not supposed to be in chains. I'm a, I'm a Roman. I'm a citizen. He was yeah. arguing for his right. And so when COVID happened, when the lockdowns happened, we were pushing back and calling out hypocrisy, just like you are, right? You're having Drag Queen Story Hour. Why can't I read this book? It's, in a library. It's amazing. In a library. We, I was saying strip clubs are open, bars are open, marijuana dispensaries are open, and we can't worship. You're, you can riot with 10,000 people in the streets of L.A. and that's, burn that's stuff, okay, burn, burn stuff, stuff to the ground. So talk about the ne necessity of people to engage in the pushback. Because I think a lot of Christians, are, oh, come on, man, just chill. Like, come on, don't, you don't have to be so intense. Da, da, da. But you got to have the foresight to see the powers that are coming to silence us. What, what, what goes on inside of you with that? Yeah. Like, why do all so this? Much. Why bring the smoke? To a library in, 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 in New Jersey, when you know today, we know there's going to be resistance, we know there's going to be haters, what is it inside of you that causes you to be like, no, no, we need to rise up? 
Because we have a God who sent his son to die on a cross yeah. to not only purchase salvation for humanity, but mm -hmm. to restore mankind back into fellowship with God so that he can get back on task with the mission of being fruitful, multiplying, and taking dominion over the earth. And, and, and that idea is bring good and godly order, <laughs> bring beauty to the chaos, mature the earth to, to where it becomes a place where, as Jesus said, that God's kingdom has come and his will right. has, is being right. done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what I want for my kids. That's what yeah. I want for your kids. Yeah. That's what I, want for, what I want for everybody's kids. And Sean, I think th there's, there's a, a couple of challenges that we have within the family of faith. We have some brothers and sisters, God bless them. Some of them are my heroes, but I think they have a, a pessimistic, defeatist view of the future that makes them stop trying. Wow. And they say, yeah. you know what? It is so bad. We're p I literally talked let's, to I let's talked to somebody hide in a cave and throw in the get our AKs and get yeah. like hide yeah. out and, and, in a bunker. And, and and literally say there yeah. is no hope for turning America right. around. We yeah. cannot fix it. It's gone too far. Right. To which I want to say that that is first of all, you don't have a crystal ball. Second of all, all you have to do is look back into history and right. there's times where people are we being fed to the lions in america are right. we being burned at the stake and stoned to death right no not yet and we have more oper we have more right. technology we have right. more money we have yeah. more people we have yeah. more churches more good teaching yeah. what we don't have is the moral grit right. and the vision of victory yeah. of the gospel to extinguish yeah. the fires of yeah, hell here on earth and if we did we could just together move as one and just like, like, remember when, when Simba came back after he defeated Scar into the Pride Lands and, 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 and all the color came back into that dark, right, shadowy right, land? Right. It's like the rightful uh, right. king had come back onto his throne. Well, Jesus Christ, the rightful king, has been seated on his throne, and we are the, the people of the yeah. Pride Land, of the Promised uh -huh. Land. Yeah. And, and what we're really doing is saying, no, Scar's still winning. No, it's just going to get so bad that it, it, there's nothing we can do. No, that's not having yeah. faith in God and the gospel. And right. by not pushing back on the darkness is failing to love our neighbors. Right. I don't want the government coming after your kids, right. their hearts and their minds, or f their physical bodies, mutilating right. them, uh, chemically castrating right. them, turning them into status lemmings. Right. I don't want that, so I must push back. Right. Or I'm, I'm not taking care of my family and the family of faith. Yeah. Well, I, I, there's that verse, you know, in the New Testament that warns us because of the increase of wickedness, the love of many will grow cold. And I'm with you. I mean, one of the reasons I, I, I was like, you know, you invited me to come and I'm like, I want to be a part of this is because I do believe I'm seeing across America, you know, we're doing these lettuce worships in all 50 U.S. capitals. In every single capital, doesn't matter how blue the city is, how dark it is, how crime ridden, how hopeless, thousands of people are showing up. Yeah. And young they're people. Hungry. And they're going they to want the altar calls and they're responding to Jesus. And it's like this. They're ready. It, 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 it really is a harvest time. And so I, I lastly, I, I want you, one last takeaway. I just, I want you to encourage people. They would say, well, it's just a tiny little pebble in a sea of, of issues. How, why is one library today, one library in New Jersey, <laughs> Cherry Hill, New Jersey, outside of Philadelphia, why is that significant? And how can we provoke people? One library at a time, one school board at a time, one... Yeah, man. One um, book at a time. Yeah. I don't think there's anything inherently magic about what I'm doing, but... I know from history and the Bible that God delights in using teeny pebbles yeah. to cause tsunami yeah. uh, tidal waves. That's yeah. what he does. He did it with, with one little kid named David who goes out to fight a, a giant <laughs> named Goliath. Or, or in history, uh, you have one man named George Whitfield who is right. in the culture of England that is decadent, it is uh, religiously, it's, it's, justice is a joke, the religion is corrupt, uh, politics is oppressive, and chaos were in, was in the streets, and then a man starts preaching the gospel that is just one little spark that catches with someone else and someone else, and pretty soon it coalesces in the universities, and then the financial sector begins to throw money at it, 
all these philanthropic organizations start up, newsletters get printed, all of a sudden the thing grows, right. it spreads across England, Snowball. hops over the, the Atlantic Ocean, and you've got great awakenings transforming right. not just individuals right. but entire nations. I think that could happen with a library reading. I think it could happen with a, uh, a worship service. Uh, but it's got to be from the heart and it's got to be led by humility and repentance. Right. Not just, you know, Jesus goosebumps because, you know, we like, we, we, we like this morning or this evening's service, but because there is a revolution of the heart yeah. of the people taking place. Well, and what you're talking about is revival that leads to reformation. It's not just about a meeting or a moment, but it actually translates into a change. It translates into, I mean, that's what the Great Awakening guys were. They were reformers, right? They yeah. brought people to Jesus, but they changed cities. Yeah. You know, they changed the whole atmosphere of cities. Yeah. And, and that's what we're doing today, changing the atmosphere of a library. Yeah. Amen. Well, I think we've got to go to our library right now. We've got to go to our library. This Thanks, bro. Good. Thank you. Thanks so much. Amazing. <laughs>